Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. As always, please make sure you subscribe if you haven't already so you can check out other videos I'm gonna be doing very soon. Also give it a thumbs up to tell other people you love the video. And if you would like to support me, you can do so on Patreon. The links are in the description. So today, we've come to a very special area on the East Coast. This point here is known as Ness Point, which is the most easterliest point in the UK, if you stand on this spot, which is what I'm about to do now. Well, obviously, over there, probably. And as we look up to what you can see for miles and is officially the tallest wind turbine in the UK, known as Gulliver. In the very distance over there, you can see Great Yarmouth Power Station, obviously Galston as well, and Corton. This is quite interesting. If you look down, you can see some little footnotes of uh, where you're actually looking. So Oslo, 619 miles that way. Uh, the summer solstice sunrise. A lot of people come here actually. Um, is it June the 21st? The longest day of the year to experience the sun rising over there, to be here at the most easterliest point. So it's the first point in the UK that gets that sunrise on the longest day of the year. Helsinki's 1,038 miles oh, that way. And let's just keep going around. Amsterdam, 133 miles away. Our closest international airport is actually Amsterdam. So rather than going to Stansted or Gatwick, our closest one is uh, over in Amsterdam. Budapest, 841 miles from this point. And as we start looking a little bit south, Monte Carlo, look, 600 and 68 miles over there. It's really fascinating to come down here and stand and look directly into all these places. Madrid from this point, 873 miles and Gibraltar. And of course down to London, 106 miles in that direction. So as always on this tour, we're gonna to do a full tour of Lowestoft. We're gonna start right at the top of the town center along the high street. We're gonna walk down towards the beach check out the two piers they've got here in Lowestoft and um, also its famous Blue Flag Beach as well. A lot of people come up here and do, uh, do a bit of fishing. You can see some fishermen along there. And it's really weird standing underneath this. It sounds like there's a plane going over. Obviously it's the blades cutting through the air. So just before we start the tour, I just thought I'd make a trip here to the Maritime Museum. Lowestoft has a deep fishing history um, and it's well worth taking a look. Um, also, this is the Sparrows Nest Bowling Club, which is the most easterly bowling club in the UK. And just up there, you can see Lowestoft Lighthouse. So we're starting off at the top part of the town here in Lowestoft. Just thought I'd uh, point this out. A lot of people probably don't even realize that the, uh, the sign for Lowestoft is actually here, just opposite the, uh, the petrol station. There's also a lot of history in Lowestoft. Again, the scores of Lowestoft. Again, I could tell you stories about that another time and also the, uh, the fishing past as well. They used to compete with Yarmouth actually to become uh, the biggest um, importer of fish as well. So again, a lot of history. Obviously again, if you did want to do an, a historic tour of Lowestoft, there's, um, there's all these signposts dotted around. Uh, the Maritime Museum that I mentioned there. Also Lowestoft Lighthouse, the High Street, and of course the Marina Theatre. I mean, you only have to look carefully just to see some of these really fascinating old buildings. And I don't know if you can see that, some old signage as well. So this house just here is actually the town's oldest house with parts of it dating back from the 15th century. Amazing. Again, you can see a lot of the history still actually written on the walls just over there. Look, the town hall stores established 1837. So it's definitely well worth a walk down here towards what is called the Triangle in Lowestoft, where they used to hold markets. Hello. 
There's something you don't see every day. <laughs> Only in Lowestoft. Now you'll see lots of these areas called scores, um, and there used to be little runways down towards the, uh, the fishing boats, and they all have very interesting tales to tell. So these are definitely worth checking out as you, uh, as you come up and down this road. And again, you see one of these little plaques on the walls, just to show off uh, this Flint house here, which is owned by the, uh, the Wild family. They were merchants and philanthropists. You can see their initials just above the door here. Look at that. 1586. So as we walk down here towards the south, we're actually walking through the core of Lowestoft's medieval settlement, uh, which was dated back from the 13th century onwards. So up here is the, uh, the Triangle Market, which hasn't been so successful in, uh, in the last 10 years or so as it was when it was first opened up. So we leave the old part of Lowestoft behind and uh, as you cross over the road here you come down to the uh, the main shopping area which is basically a big strip all the way down um, towards the beach and over um, a very interesting bridge as well which we'll come to. And as I walk past this area here always does remind me of the Queen Bic in EastEnders. And this beautiful Victorian building known as the Marina Theatre here in Lowestoft, which is also a cinema as well. Had some great shows here, the Moscow City Ballet, the Russian Ice Stars, Jane McDonald, Mumford and Sons, Tony Christie, David Essex, and also Darren Brown too. So a great place to come if you want a night out, if you're staying around the area. And as we come down to the bottom here, yes, it's a train station. It's Britain's most easterliest train station and a sign that looks like it's been there forever. And I just wanted to make reference to this building here. It's pretty old, had a facelift recently. You can see the mural on the side and also home to a lot of seagulls. And if you do ever walk over the Bastille Bridge, it's, uh, it's quite weird when cars go over because you feel the vibrations and everything and uh, you feel like the bridge is going to collapse. So just coming up to this area, this is the Royal Plain Fountains, uh, which is a bit of a must-see. The fountains consist of 74 individual water jets. The kids love it in the summer. Obviously due to coronavirus, it's not actually currently on. So this is the first pier we're coming up to, the South Pier in Lowestoft. And just here is the Royal Norfolk and Suffolk Yacht Club. There's a little place there to get some ice creams. And if you come down past the South Pier, you come to this unique little beach, which is actually really perfect for young children and families to come along to. You can see these rock berms that they added um, in the last few years as well, because a lot of erosion has been happening in Lowestoft. So just there in the distance, you can see Lowestoft's second pier, that's the Claremont Pier, and more the rocks that they've added in the last few years too. So walking up to the end of what is, what I guess, a jetty um, and the mouth uh, to the river coming into Lowestoft as well. You can see the wind turbine Gulliver in the distance and some steps that go to nowhere. So what these rock berms have actually done is created little bays which um, has made the erosion stop and obviously create some, uh, some nice safe little beaches for the kids to come and paddle out in the water. Obviously the temperature of the water as well within the bays is a little bit warmer than the, uh, the cold North Sea further out. Up there is the, uh, the famous Blue Flag Beach. Another stuff doesn't really have many attractions along its uh, seafront, just a few tea rooms. Um, in the summer you'll find a fair that comes on here on the Royal Green and those people that have come to Lowestoft in the past might remember about the Lowestoft Air Show which was a, a fabulous two-day event it used to bring thousands of people here it used to pump hundreds of thousands into the local economy 
but uh, unfortunately that all stopped so which was a shame because I used to love coming down here in the summer great atmosphere they used to have fireworks as well This area here was always very busy for donuts and, uh, and the tea rooms and the fish and chip shops along here to go and grab yourself fish and chips. Not currently open at the moment, but this is one of my favourite uh, tea rooms to come into in Lowestoft when it's a lovely day and sitting there in the garden checking out the view. So this has gone through some transformations as well. Um, used to be a nightclub, Turkish restaurants. They used to do some great outside entertainment there in the summer as well. It's now up for let. So if anyone wants a, a nightclub opportunity or maybe a restaurant here on the seafront, I mean, you can imagine actually how good that would probably look. Just wanted to point out, look at how perfect and straight and in line those chimneys are. And this is why I love coming to Lowestoft, especially on a day like today. Literally check out the beach. Now I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments whether I'm right or wrong, but the blue flag beach is literally on the other side of the pier. But again, this is just as nice. Bearing in mind we're still in lockdown, kind of at the moment. It's, uh, it's a very busy day on the beach. So flip-flops are off. I've got to check the water. Bit cold as always when you first go in, but uh, yeah, get used to it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Again, social distancing on this beach is, uh, is certainly not a problem. You can see all the old Victorian buildings as well, standing proud along the seafront there. Yeah, definitely recommend coming to Lower Stoft. If nothing else, it's got one of my favourite beaches on the East Coast. You'll probably hear me saying that a lot, actually. I, I have to say that <laughs> every beach I go to is one of my favourites in some way or another. But the best thing about them is they're all unique. They're, they all have their own little quirks and all feel completely and utterly different. And just coming up here to, uh, to Claremont Pier, I was lucky enough to uh, do some commentary one year for the air show and this is where we used to sit with the pilots, especially when the Red Arrows used to fly over. Um, we had such an amazing view. And one year, obviously, I, I worked for the local radio station here on the East Coast. We held a little bit of a beach party down here on the beach. Um, again, so many fond memories. Claymont Pier's got some roller skating in there and it's got a club along the top. I believe um, it's just been sold to a new buyer as well. If you ever wanted to come and see where the seagulls live, <laughs> here in Lowestoft, there's many places, but um, you'll find a lot of them all under here as well. I just hope I don't get pooed on. See their bots in the air there. Do you know what, I've never I've never actually seen a baby seagull. I'm just trying to look out for one now. So this bit is the Blue Flag Beach here in Lowestoft. You can see the beach huts all along the top there as well. I can't believe how busy it is actually today. Got lovely sand quality as well here on the beach, just like Goulston Beach actually. It's, uh, it's really lovely and soft. Water quality is really good too. So that was Lowestoft, Britain's most easterliest town. Thanks so much for watching the video as always. Please give it a thumbs up, share the video. Please make sure you subscribe as always. And if you'd like to support me to help me make even more videos, my Patreon links are in the description. I'll see you next time.